Hello YouTube friends, Dr. Teresa here again. We have another great suggestion from Crown Tail Half Moon and they are asking how much I enrich and for how long and how often. So I'm going to talk about that here. You can see I have a vessel that is bubbling away with some enriched brine shrimp and I'm getting ready to disconnect the hose here because part of my process is to use the same vessel for about a week and then on the weekends to completely clean out and swap out the vessel. You can see when I move the hatching vessel and tank over to a sink and take off the lid off of that tank, all the buildup from the hatching and enrichment vessel, I should say, from just a week. So it's important to clean that out. And I actually do swap enrichment vessels, which I'll show in a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm pouring all of that enrichment solution into a sieve and there you can see there's still lots of live brine shrimp in there so I don't want to get rid of that I'm actually going to rinse that off and put that in the door seahorse tank but with that shrimp out you can see very well all the buildup inside of the enrichment vessel which is, makes it very clear it's a good idea to clean that out regularly so one of the things that I do is I first start rinsing the vessel and get some of the large noticeable debris and detritus that is in there off. And once it's fairly clean, you can see here a lot of that is rubbed off. What I do next is I start filling up the enrichment vessel and I'm going to put in here, this is very diluted bleach water, I put in a couple of sprays and I fill up the enrichment vessel with water and I don't, notice I have the hose up so it doesn't drain. And I'm also going to add 3% hydrogen peroxide. So I add both of those in there and I'm going to fill the vessel up to the top with water. And essentially I just let that soak for a little bit. While that's soaking in the corner of the sink, I go ahead and disinfect the lid that I use for the tank that houses the enrichment vessel, just because that can build up bacteria too. And then I rinse out the tank part itself as well. And when I'm finished rinsing, I put the tank and the lid on a towel to start drying on their own. And then I go back to the enrichment vessel, I dump out the water, it's mostly disinfected now, but you'll notice when I wipe the inside with a paper towel, there is a film coming off. So I like to get in there with a paper towel and really wipe very well until literally it is squeaky clean inside. Now that does pretty well, but at the very bottom, that's a little tricky to get into. So I do add one extra step. I add more 3% hydrogen peroxide just to the very bottom. And you notice how it's really bubbling away, which tells me there's still a lot of bacteria in there. So I'm gonna let that sit a little bit and let it go until it stops bubbling. And while it does that, I'm going to go ahead and finish drying off the tank. And I'm not really worried about the tank having a lot of bacteria or anything like that. I just like to keep my equipment very nice, not only looking good, but it just helps it stay in good working condition and not falling apart because it's so caked with salt and things of that nature. So I go ahead, get all of those things, and after a while, you can see that the bubbling has stopped. So I am ready to get that last little bit out. Use my paper towel once again to get that bottom. And now I'm ready to swap out the vessel. I like to take the hatching vessel, the one that I've cleaned and put it aside. And for the week, it will just sit there and air dry. And that's just another way to prevent buildup of, of bacteria. And I put the other one up on the shelf. Then I pour water into the enrichment vessel. And I already have a batch of brine shrimp that was ready 
to transfer in there so I do add it to the vessel and now I'm ready for my enrichment normally I'd probably add a little bit more than I have here I add anywhere from about one quarter to a third of a cup at a time I don't really measure it but I look for coloration so if I have a lot of brine shrimp like I do here I try to add enough where I can see the green or the dark green so this isn't bad I normally for a new batch would make it a little darker but then when that step is completed I plug in the hatcher and this is evening, so I do let that sit overnight. And look, in the next morning already, that solution looks so much lighter. But it is good enough for me to um, use for feeding the brine shrimp. And at night, what I do is I scoop out a little bit of the solution because I'm doing basically a mini water change and so now I'm pouring the brine shrimp into my sieve this way and there's no advantage to it other than like I said it allows me to do a small water change because I can refill that water with more salt water that I took out replace it and it just extends the life here is my brine shrimp um, bucket of salt water that I was preparing so I replace what I took out. And here I have a new batch of the enrichment that I just made. So I'm going to, again, at night, 24 hours later after the first time, I'm going to add more of the enrichment. And again, I want mm, anywhere from a half, well, I'd say closer to a quarter to a third of a cup. Uh, basically, I just go by how it looks in the um, enrichment vessel. So every 24 hours, I set the enrichment and I just keep adding more brine to brine shrimp to that enrichment vessel. Every time I hatch more out, I go ahead and put it in that vessel and I use that same solution with the mini water changes for the next week. So that is my process. I hope this helped you figure out how much enrichment you should be using for your brine shrimp and how often you can add the enrichment. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and hope to see you next time. And if you have any questions, please reach out and let me know. I love answering them with new videos.